Hi guys, welcome back. This is FSX404 and today I'm going to go over some uh, airport VFR departure procedures. Basically I want to do this lesson right now because you should really be familiar with proper departure procedures uh, from an airport. So let's get into this. Before departing an airport we should be familiar with its published traffic pattern. A published traffic pattern at an airport is not only used for approaching aircraft but it will also be used for your VFR departure procedures. As far as VFR departure procedures from an airport, there's two types of departure procedures that we use. Those from a controlled airport or an airport with a tower, and those departures from an uncontrolled airport or the airport that has no control tower. For the controlled airport part of the departure procedures, I will use the Almonte Airport KEMT for this tutorial. El Monte Airport is located in Southern California and it's actually 11 miles east of a downtown Los Angeles. A few quick points about El Monte. Its runways are runway 19 and runway 1. The runway is 4,000 feet long, 75 feet wide. Its elevation is about 300 feet. Its traffic pattern altitude is 1,300 feet or 1,000 feet AGL. It has a left traffic pattern for runway 1, but it has a right traffic pattern for runway 19. So both of the traffic patterns in El Monte are located west of the airport. One last thing to note is that Almonte has a class Delta airspace that extends up to 2,800 feet. Even though for Almonte both of the traffic patterns are located on the west side of the airport, in a controlled airport, unless there's other restrictions, and I'll go into this a little bit later, the ATC will accommodate arriving and departing airplanes to a traffic pattern of their choice. So for example, in El Monte, the ATC will allow you to depart runway 19 to the east unless there's a good reason not to, like having five uh, airplanes in the traffic pattern at the same time and two more arriving, three leaving, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, they will let you depart on either side. For most tower-controlled airports, there will be basically three types of departure procedures. A straight-out departure, a crosswind departure, and a downwind departure. A straight out departure procedure is done anytime your flight path will take you within 30 degrees to the left or right side of the runway. One thing to remember is that in a straight out departure we have to keep our runway heading or the upwind heading until we have passed the crosswind point on our upwind leg. Once we have passed the crosswind point on our upwind leg we can resume our navigation and fly to our destination. Just as a note, most of the airports will have crosswind turns done at about 400 to 500 feet AGL, or that's about a mile from the end of the runway. But there are cases where airports have extended upwinds for whatever reasons. Fullerton Airport, for example, has a conveniently placed 700 foot radio antenna tower right where the crosswind uh, part of the traffic pattern should be. So obviously the upwind is extended for a while until you pass the antenna and then you can uh, turn on to your crosswind. So to be on the safe side, if you don't know when to turn, uh, keep a straight heading for about two miles and then uh, resume your own navigation on uh, straight out departure. The second departure procedure will be a crosswind departure procedure. The crosswind departure will be used when your flight path to your destination airport will take you between 30 to 90 degrees from the end of the runway. The way the crosswind departure is done is that we'll fly the upwind leg, turn on to the crosswind at 400 to 500 feet AGL, and maintain the crosswind heading until we have passed the downwind point of our crosswind leg. Once we have crossed our downwind point on our crosswind leg, we can resume our own navigation. The last departure procedure for a controlled airport is the downwind departure. We'll basically take off, fly the traffic pattern until we get onto our downwind leg of the traffic pattern, and once we have climbed above the traffic pattern altitude, preferably 500 feet above, we can resume our own navigation. One thing to remember about controlled airports is that they have an airspace around them. It's going to be either Class Delta, Charlie, or Bravo. El Monte happens to be a Class Delta airspace. And as long as you're inside that airspace, the tower will control you in VFR conditions. And as soon as you leave that airspace, whether it be uh, away from it or above it, the tower will give you a frequency change. 
For the uncontrolled airport departure procedures, I will use the Corona Airport in Southern California, K-A-J-O. A few quick points about Corona, its runways are runway 7 and 25. The runway is uh, 3,200 feet long and 60 feet wide. The elevation is 533 feet. Its traffic pattern altitude is 1,533 feet or 1,000 feet AGL. And it has a left traffic pattern for runway 25, but it has a right traffic pattern for runway 7. So both of the traffic patterns at Corona are located south of the airport. So getting back to the departure procedures, when departing Corona Airport, there are four different ways we can depart an uncontrolled airfield. A straight out departure, a crosswind departure, a downwind departure, and for the uncontrolled airports, there's something called the midfield departure procedure. The first departure is a straight out departure. This departure is exactly the same as in the towered airport. You fly straight for about two miles and then you resume your own navigation. For a crosswind departure at Corona, from runway 25, we can only do a left crosswind departure to the south. And from runway 7, we can only do a right crosswind departure to the south. Because both of these traffic patterns are located to the south, our crosswind departure must be done to the south. For the downwind departure at Corona, from runway 25, we can only do a left downwind departure. And from runway 7, we can only do a right downwind departure. If we wish to depart Corona to the north, then we must do something called a midfield departure. If we take off from runway 25, we'll fly the upwind, then we'll turn onto the left crosswind, and then onto the left downwind. Once we are on the downwind and we are 500 feet above the traffic pattern altitude, in this case 2033 feet MSL, we'll turn north and overfly the midfield and only after overflying the midfield we can resume our own navigation. The same holds true when departing runway 7 and once we are 500 feet above the traffic pattern altitude or 2033 feet MSL in this case, we'll turn north overfly the airport at around midfield and only after we have overflown the airport we can resume our own navigation. Anyway guys this was the uh, VFR departure procedures for uh, both controlled and uncontrolled airports I hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys soon